So make dua for the health of his uh, wife. Inshallah, she will be okay. So I'll try to cover these things here. You know, have a seat if you want, uh, you know. So uh, the thing that we are doing right now is, is the emergency procedures discussion. In case of an emergency, what we need to do. So anybody who is a trained firefighter, first responder, None. So, okay. I also learned it because of my industrial experience. We got sort of a trained, so we understand what the different type of the fires are there and all those things. But this presentation is, if you look at it, <clears throat> we are not discussing here that uh, or training you for the firefighting. So the important thing in case of an emergency is avoid panic, do a systematic uh, process. It is a systematic process, step by step. So the most important thing is to save the lives. This facility is critical because there are a lot of people, at times there are more than 1,000 people over here, those who attend Salah. On normal day, there are a lot of kids here because of HPA. On the weekends, there is a weekend Islamic school. The kids are range, the ages range from, you know, five years to 15 years. So those certainly need a, a shepherd, you know, to tell them where to go and what to go. So in case of an emergency, there is no question that you would be looking at, where is AD? AD, AD, come tell me what I need to do. No, first responders, when they get the call, whether it's in a medical emergency or a fire case, for example, or an accident, they don't ask each other what to do. They go there and they start taking steps one by one. There are five people or seven people in the team on a fire engine. So they immediately get it. One, one guy would get into the valve, the, the other guy will roll up the hoses, the guy on the valve will connect it, the other two guys will go and hold the nozzle. So this is the process. Their lead will be uh, telling them where to spray the water. But there is no question there at that time. So understand, this is important for us to have a clear concept what we are going to do in case of a fire. And <clears throat> because of a panic, uh, so in this, in this session what we will discuss is some uh, outline, major steps in an emergency, uh, uh, whether it is a fire or an active shooter uh, discussion or scenario, prepare and train us. If we are here like 30 people, if we understand what we can do, you can manage the rest of the crowd in case of an emergency. That is what the understanding is. You don't need a flag or anything, but your actions or my actions, you know, that will direct people where to go. Because our culture is, is totally different. I tell you that and we will be talking about. So, and then the uh, uh, develop and designate team volunteers, those who will be acting. You may be here, you may not be here. Maybe half of us here at a time of an emergency, but those few people can manage the crowd. That is what the idea here is. All right, so in case of an emergency procedure, you know, we need to work together as a team, not to panic, not to run away, not to put your head in your, you know, uh, knees. No. You have to understand, realize what we need to do. And those are the steps taken. Again, important thing is save the lives. You don't worry about it, whether this wall is burning or that wall is burning or the carpet is getting damaged. Don't worry about it. Our, you know, as, as a human being, as a first responder, the first thing that they uh, go and look for is the human being. They're going to save the lives of the people, not anything else. 
So now think about it. Over here, when we come for prayer, we have younger kids, infant, two, uh, you know, teenagers, and the adults, and the people, those are little handicapped, and, or people, elder people like me, those who barely walk. So imagine it, in case of an emergency, this masjid is full, this floor and the upper floor. So what is going to happen? If a handicapped person come in front of the door and he is taking a minute or two to cross the door, right? It will be a stampede situation. That is what we need to avoid. We need to understand what are the emergency evacuation routes for us. Where are we going to go? So if thousand people are here, in case of an emergency, they disperse and they go into this one. Half of the people will start the car, okay, khalli walli salah, you know, it's time to leave. Okay, what I can't do anything in case of a fire, you know. So they will start the car, they will be going out, there will be a long line. First responders can't come inside. So you see, we are delaying it. Every moment, every minute is important uh, to allow the fire responder to act, to protect uh, the facility and the human. So this is, this is what we need to understand uh, in this today's presentation. Uh, major, uh, uh, you know, is our safe evacuation is the one. So the first thing is how the system works. So this facility is equipped with, with an automatic uh, fire system, fire protection, fire sensing, fi and fire protection system. So how does it work? You will see that uh, I left my pointer. So there are uh, enunciators, this, this thing like a fire, and it has a white lamp in the middle. This is strobe. In case of a fire, a smoke detectors are here on each and every floor in on every room. So once a smoke detector active, uh, sense smoke, that means fire, it will activate this strobe. There are two strobes in this hall. Similarly, there are strobes in the upper floor, second floor also. So once this strobe, it's a very loud sound. You cannot do anything. So that means there is a fire. So we have the sprinkler system, which is pressurized by the uh, fire water, that we have a fire water tank and there is a pump, and that keeps the system pressurized. So anytime this sprinkler senses the fire, that, that particular sprinkler will open up and will spray water in that area. So we don't need to do, you know, at that time, you know, what we need to do is we need to evacuate this place. I mean, I'm, I'm, I will repeat this thing many times. So, and then we have the fire extinguishers. Like you see that fire extinguisher is there at the end over here, and there are about 30, 35 fire extinguisher placed in this facility. And this is only to be used by those who understand how to use it. It's a pressurized container. So don't try to use it. Don't let any you know, kid play with it. It's harmful. It has the gases inside, so if anybody is try to play it and they activate it and the gas come out and if, some, if somebody inhales, it, it will be a difficult situation to, uh, you know, survive him from that shock. It, it will completely take out the oxygen from the body of the person who inhales it. So uh, <clears throat> these are the few things if we don't understand these things, you know, then we will take it lightly. So in case of a fire, you, you know, we talked about it. So wherever the sprinkler is working, let it work. What we are going to do next. The first thing is, 
we have two master points. Master points are the assembly points or the gathering points. We give, we, the name is given a master point so that people remember it. It is a little different word, okay? But so there, are, there is one right here in the back where we have the water tank and the pump house. That is one master house, uh, master uh, point. The other master point is on the north east of that uh, detention pond. If you look at it, 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 you will see on the parking, you know, street light, there is a board there hanging, muster point. So <clears throat> these are the places where we will go. And what will happen is that in case of a fire, once the, our system alarm activates or it initiates, it is monitored 24 seven by a company. So they will call first responder 911. They, they are not going to ask anybody in this community or in the office what is happening. The moment there is a fire alarm, they will call first responder and they will come. So that, that is the one thing, you know, uh, if somebody is trying to call 911, uh, I'm always remember this thing. Your address, your phone number, what the situation is. Very clearly, you know. So this place address is 16700 Old Loeta. If you give them any other address, they will go somewhere else. They won't come here because somebody miscommunicated the address. So remember this thing, 16,700 Old Loeta, 77379. So if you happen to call 911 from here, remember this thing, tell them your name. That is the situation they will ask, your name? your home address, your phone number, and where you are right now. So stay calm, whatever the situation is, right? Stay calm and stay on the phone till they get here. But if there are a thousand people here and everybody start calling 911, it's a chaos. So in case of a fire, you don't need to call the company that is monitoring the, our fire system, they will call 911 and that will come in. So what we need to do in case of a fire, let's, let's talk about it. Whatever we are doing, whether we are praying, whether we are in a class, whatever we are doing, we got to suspend that. Stop it. It's time. Once this is strobe is activated, you see the flashing light and this is a very high pitch noise that you can't bear it. You know, you got to stop everything, whatever you are doing, whether you are praying, whether you are chatting here, whether you are in a class, you, if somebody is in a restroom, stop. It's time to activate without any delay. Your life and everybody else's life is important. Okay, now, that is one thing. And then we need to head towards the two muster points. So at this time, when we are leaving the masjid, we are leaving the facility, the prayer area or the school area or the classrooms, do not get into your car and start driving out. The, the kids, those who are here, they may be calling their mom and dad, oh, there's a problem here, come and pick me up. So there will be 100 cars coming in. Again, we are blocking it. Reduce your phone conversation at that time. Make sure you talk specific things. You are not a broadcaster. Do not talk to police or the first responders, those who are here. Let them do their work. They are not going to ask you a question. So first responders, if they come in, in case of a uh, you know, medical emergency, they will go straight to that person. They will, nobody else need to talk to them. And they will give them help. That person, they give them that person help. That's it. 
So similarly, the firefighters, when they will come in, they will start working on how to fight the fire. That's it. You don't need to tell them, oh, look at this, smoke is coming. Oh no, there is a much more fire flame is there. Hold on, Kaspa. So don't engage them in, you, in a discussion with you. It's nothing. So this is something very important. So do not drive in and drive out. So the people, those who would be leaving, and when I talk about the muster points, so look at it. We have multiple doors. This is the, this floor plan. So if you look at it, uh, you know, there, there is an emergency exit. There is an emergency exit. And we need to open up these all doors. So whoever here is, make sure that you go there, open up the door, and let the people go out. And similarly, on the, on the second floor, we have two stairways. Do not use the elevator. We have two stairways. It's not written here anywhere that this is for men or this is for women. Understand. The women upstairs, they can come down from both the stairs downside. And that's why I'm asking for the volunteers, those who are here, you need to act as a usher, shepherd, tell the people to go in one direction. So if we are going this way, everybody will be going for the sleepers, you know, or the shoes, because we don't come in the shoes. Don't worry about your shoes. Go out. What is more important? At the, in case of a fire emergency, what is more important? Your life or your shoes? <laughs> so don't worry about the shoes. If your, if your uh, feet or your socks get dirty, it's okay. But save yourself and the, your loved ones, you know, and go away from the heat zone. So this, this is thing, the important thing. So remember, you know, we often get complained that the uh, women do not have a secondary egress. So, but there are two stairways. Either way, women can come down. But there, there, this is the catch now that, it, oh man, one moment, sorry. So, I have drawn a line here. So, if you look at this dotted line, I'm dividing this arbitrarily, this is space. So, those who are here, Everybody doesn't need to go out from those double doors. The people there, they can leave from that door. The people here, they can leave that door, from that door, utilizing. We don't have to go and pick up our shoes. There are double doors. So those ladies or men, those who are coming from up, down, up the stair, down the stair on this side, look, there, there are multiple doors available. You know, this is a double door. This is a double door. <coughs> Excuse me. So they can exit immediately, go out. And where you are going on this side, you're going on the back where the water tank is there. That is the muster point. But don't stand on the road, on any road. Don't stand on the road. That may be used by the first responders, whether fire truck. It's a huge heavy vehicle, you know, 18 wheeler type. It, it, they carry of the loads so it is not very easy for them to turn around okay or break it right away so that's why we have the road access road in on the back so that the fire truck when they come in from here they can turn and they can go out basically so understand the concept so everything is designed based on the fire or the other emergency scenarios so when, when we do this thing, so go, going out, that becomes an important thing. Parents are responsible for their children. Whether it is two years, one year, you know, you always keep them close to your heart. But when they are four years, it's very difficult to control them. But in such a situation, do not run around everywhere you know, uh, disturbing the other people, those who are evacuating, asking, 
you know, like Adnan is there. Adnan, did you see my child, Omar? Adnan is busy at this time. He is confused, right? So, this group of the people, those who understand the uh, these procedures. So, so you are not going to leave and run away to the master point. Your job would be to open up the doors, direct the people go this side or go this side wherever you are okay and if you if you see there are young kids they are lost they are they might be crying in one place okay not going anywhere so grab them comfort them take with them then the other thing important thing is the elders or the handicapped people whether they are on the women's side or the men's side so there is a uh, you know a philosophy for example in this hall we don't let the uh, chairs cross this door basically i'm going up to here so we we allow the chair to come up to this line towards the wall not anywhere else why it is so if the chairs are here everywhere what do you think can you, in case of an emergency, can you exit quickly from this door? No, it's not possible, right? So that's an obstruction. That's why we say, uh, you know, our uh, you know security fellows, uh, brother Hamid, Adil, and all the other front guys, do not block the entrances. Do not block the doors, single door or a double door, whether you are on the woman's side or on the men's side. So everything, uh, I hope uh, you are understanding, we are not trying to be rude with the people when they come and put the chairs here or there or there. So in case of a large congregations, large community places, we got to be disciplined. We have to have chairs in a corner where those fellows would not obstruct. The other thing is for the elder people or those who cannot walk, handicapped they are always advised to stay in their place why like i said before if they come in the way of this door there are 100 people lined up on the back and somebody will get panic and then the stampede starts that is how the stampede starts one person fell down and the rest are in panic mode and they don't know and they would not care for anybody, you know, they will just run over. So, so we got to be aware of these situations. So again, those who understand the procedure, we can tell them, comfort them, you know, uh, like me, that I'm just money, you sit here, I will take you out. So this is the situation that those are the important things that we need to understand what we need to do at this time. So again, uh, do not let anybody block the uh, exit, any, whether it is a single door or a double door. And then when you are evacuating, uh, like I said before, go to one of the muster points, stay clear of the roads, do not drive, do not drive in or do not drive out. This is important. Don't create a panic. If you are not trained to use the fire extinguisher, do not use it. This is, this is something important because it can cause more problems than solution. So who, do, only those who are trained uh, because of the, whether their job nature or they have taken the uh, you know, the training, then they can use it. So, in case of an emergency procedure, uh, we, we have the cases uh, where the first aid is required and we call the first responders, uh, you know, to come and help. So, if those who know the first aid, they are certified first aid pr uh, personnel, you know, then they can start doing that first aid. 
whether it is um, uh, you know trying to resurrect or use the uh, defibrillator or different things if you don't know then go away from that person you know in our culture what happened is that if somebody is fell uh, fell uh, is down you know and he's sick he lose uh, conscious everybody would be looking at him what's happened him or her has nothing to look at it you need to give a space so that the air is there and it has happened here that did some uh, one time a person was getting suffocated and he was kind of like a passing out so dr khan was here mashallah at that time and he looked at him and he said is okay just go away from him and he he made him to lay down in the back and then some air they started fan and all that in a minute or two he that person recovered so it could be a case of a cardiac arrest it could be a, another case you know a stroke and all those things so we need to understand what are the different signs of different things for example the stroke is causing causes about uh almost a million you know cases a year in USA of the stroke and the stroke if the medical help is not provided to that person it may be paralyzed for the life or it could be fatal but what are the signs of the strokes anybody so what they say is when the stroke happens the person will start acting differently a normal person you are talking to him and then suddenly he can't smile right he cannot pronounce the loved one name that he probably say that name many times in a day and he cannot pronounce that these are the signs that the person doesn't have the facial control smiling making you know uh, different faces it is a small thing we never understand these things right so smiling is a very common thing but if a person can't smile and you you, you see that crooked smile on his face ask him to raise the hand one hand or both hands if he cannot raise his or her hands another sign that means he doesn't have the controls so and then ask him like i said before ask him say the name you know or a word that he or she uses frequently can't pronounce you know but ahmed is a mad a mad you cannot understand what he is or she is saying these are the signs of stroke call 911 tell them you suspect a stroke case and they will come as soon as they can come and they will immediately start treating that person so first 2 3 hours are critical in case of a stroke if you can get the medical help for that person in this short time that will be great help so understand in texas there are a lot of places which is not like Houston or Spring you know the medical facilities or the 911 fellows or the first responder stations are probably 70 60 miles from that place so they suffer a lot in that case so these are the things that we need to understand you know but if you understand what the person problem is if he doesn't have a fractured limb you know you can move him to a safer place you know in case of an emergency uh, and this happens you know the, when the fire happens you know the panic is there and people fell down okay they they have fractured uh, you know limbs you can move them uh, uh, to to a safer place this is what again you are taking a risk but you are saving that person's life so this this is thing is important for us to understand that but and uh, and we will will come down there uh, more 
uh, I'm going over now, for example, this procedure here is, you know, we, we have a whole uh, safety handbook in our uh, manuals are there, you know. So what we call here is fire wardens, like I'm asking you all to be together, put your names and uh, give it to uh, Brother Hamid so that he can compile the list of the trained volunteers so that he can, whenever you are here, he, he have the surety that the people will take correct steps at the right time. So, so, so like what I said, for example, fire, okay, they, they, there are automatic things, those, those will happen. So when the alarm activates, you know, the sprinkler may come in. So what happened that panel, our panel alarm panel does, it unlocks all the doors in the facility. So wherever you are, you can go to the nearest door and then you can exit. For example, in the gym, the gym has four doors, uh, double doors on this side, one on this, uh, in the alley. Uh, and then there are two uh, double doors on the back side. So all these are locked normally, but in case of an emergency, these will open up automatically and the people can exit out of those doors. So this is for our understanding how this thing, uh, system works. So, so the sprinklers will come on. Uh, okay, important thing here is we do not have a large water storage tanks. It probably will run for maybe five minutes, a little more than that. The purpose here is to contain the fire in that localized area. It's not here that we can bring a hose, a, a four inch hose, and we can spray water. The, the purpose of this sprinkler system is to contain the localized damage. That, that is what the purpose is. And that gives us the time to evacuate, go to a safe place. So if you have a purse, you, you have wallets, people have cell phones, they need to keep it in a place where they can pick it up in a move and in the next step, they can move outside. This is important here. So all, all of you guys are really important in the sense that you would be helping the rest of the you know uh, community members those who come here for prayers and you will be able to evacuate this facility in case of a fire or any other emergency safely so this is the uh, fire case was there uh, remember we have the muster point like i, I said before is one on the northeast side of the uh, detention pond, and the other one is here right in the back. Now there is another sh uh, case of active shooter. So we had, I think a year before or two, we had the FIA, FBI guy, uh, guys came here, then the police guys and the first responders, those who came in, and there are always updates for the active shooter. It's kind of becoming a frequent thing, you know, is happening everywhere uh, in USA. So before the situation was, okay, they used to say, okay, lock your doors. We do not have any door that if we lock we will be safe right so what are we going to do the upper classrooms you can lock it but it still those have a small you know glass window there it doesn't make it safe exit the place as soon as you real anybody realize there is an active shooter evacuate this place go away from that active shooter do not get into a, a localized crowd, you know, 100 people here, 50 people here, spread out. Hide behind wherever you can. If you can't have that opportunity, so now what the uh, recommendation coming from the agencies, 
is you can fight you fight with that person these phones are brick phones you know these are bricks if you throw it in a person you know it is a brick so if you if you remember you know in minnesota and all those places where these shoot active shooter uh, you know incidents happen so who who subdued that person a common man but he had the courage to go and fight with that person so um, yes ma'am waalaikum assalam this is a scenario you know probably we never thought about it so no right now right what, what she is saying is right what she is saying is right okay there is no manual override some of the doors like over here you know the main entry doors you you will see a green button if you press that that deactivates the magnetic lock temporarily and then you can exit these double doors but over there i don't think we have anything so but that is a situation we need to modify some control there you're right oh yeah yeah do, do we have that uh, manual here so no there there are there are there are few things i'm trying to see you will see a red box a red box and that call that nam name is manual you know uh, fire it's uh, activation so if you break it and pull it out it will be the fire situation but i I'll, i'll i probably would have to show you you know where those are located no uh, that is what i said right now we don't have that ability but one one situation is there are those manual operators you know activator for the fire case and then you can pull that one yes it's located everywhere over here there are two or three not here outside near the doors main doors and and similarly in the in the gym right that, that is why we we need to have it in back of our, our mind and we need to get to that place yes correct that is a that is a good scenario that you are telling us you know but uh, you know we need to keep in mind where those uh, i'm trying to see it is outside uh, not anywhere inside yeah it it is out near the doors so yeah we, we can go uh, both sides and that is what uh, you know so there there are many things you know they write it down in the uh, agencies you know advises what you need to do put the furniture in the way so that the person can the active shooter cannot walk uh, quickly or run around you know or do anything you know or throw up anything these fire extinguishers are a big tool also understand if you pull it and put the its outlet on the face towards the face of the active shooter or anybody who is nonsense you know is going to gasp for the air you know pretty soon so understand these are the things that the the first thing uh, again um with that thing i'm uh,
pretty much done. But the first thing is, you know, if you if you're anybody is calling 911, understand the things that you have you have to remember. Number one, you got to tell your name, your phone number, your home address, and then where you are at that time. They will ask you crossroad or anything, but we don't have any crossroad. This is this. There is a spruce, uh, you know, uh, boulevard uh, or uh, the run is here. That is the entrance to the Colony Creek. But if you tell them the 16,700 old Loeta, they will come here. And understand the for the emergency responders, both gates have the pin pad there, so they can enter the gate. They are not waiting for your you know that somebody come and open the gate. So when, when the call goes out to them, they understand the area firefighter, they understand what the code is and the uh, fire monitoring company will tell them what the code is. So both gates have the same code. So they can enter it, whether it is midnight time and there is a uh, fire alarm goes out, so they will come inside. And that is what happened when the clinic caught fire they came inside, you know, one way or the other, and they managed it. And because of that quick response, our HPA buildings were safe. So understand, I mean, there was pretty, it was very close, and it was burning a lot, with long flames, you know. So alhamdulillah, you know, there was no damage to HPA uh, buildings or any other property. No, that is not connected. That is not connected, sir. Jazak, uh, uh, a quick, uh, if you can mention the, the contact email for Brother Hamid, so if anybody wants to be part of the team, uh, so they can send their contact details. So let me tell you, it's security.champions at ISGH. It's pretty straightforward, security.champions at ISGH.org. So if you can send your name and, and contact details, so inshallah he will add you in the group. And the second question is on the uh, handling the handicap and elderly. For example, in Ramadan, uh, we have this hall, for example, or the masjid is filled with uh, all age and uh, uh, gender here. So in case of, for example, taking the example of this musallah, we have elderly and handicap as well sitting in the here. So in case of something, what's the protocol? Like for us as a, uh, as a volunteer, how should we handle uh, evac in the evacuation then, uh, of our handicapped and elderly or senior people? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. So what you were asking, how we will evacuate? in case of a fire while the uh, whole community is here. This house is full, you know, on the ground floor and the above floor. So again, uh, let the elders or the handicapped sit. All the other guys, they would go out. Do not wait for their, your shoes or slippers or anything. Just go out, walk outside. And like I said before, those who are living on this side, they need to go in the back. Those who are living, living from the south side doors, you know, of this facility, go to the point on the north uh, uh, detention pond. There you will see the muster point. Stay away from the roads. Do not drive out. That will be another chaos that we are not looking for. That answers? That answers? We are basically, they need to stay while the rest of this, everybody is evacuating and then uh, we should help them. Yeah, so, so some of us, you know, we need to understand our duty and then we need to come forward at that time that, okay, uh, there are two women or three women on the other side, you know, uh, those who cannot walk quickly, so need help. Probably two, uh, you know, ladies can help each handicapped person 
to carry them outside or help them to walk a little bit faster towards a quick outside way or exit. And similarly over here. Uh, brother, so it's an important point of having uh, designated volunteers in case of emergencies, right? Yeah, so I think that's, that's one important point. <coughs> the second question is, what happens if there is a false alarm and we are in the middle of salah or a lecture, what's going on if we are in the masjid and there is a false alarm? We, we just asked uh, Sheikh Mamdouh exactly about this, me and Brother Riza. Brother Riza is not here, right? and uh, take any false al alarm as a serious alarm. Once you hear the, the sound that Brother Amjad was talking about, this flashing light and sound, take it seriously. Say salam tak taslim on the right hand, left hand, and leave immediately. Uh, don't wait for the imam to continue. Don't just, the imam himself needs to end the salah immediately. Don't take it as maybe it's a drill. Maybe don't take, it's not maybe. Leave the salah immediately. Salah can be redone after that and leave to the nearest uh, safety uh, uh, place. And again, the Sheikh Mamdouh is telling you there is no mazahib in this uh, opinion. Emergency is an emergency. Take it seriously because this exactly happened in the in uh, last uh, Friday. Yes, we were praying and this happened and I personally didn't know what should I do, right? Because I, I'm not thinking about myself. I'm, I'm talking about the 300 people here praying. I, li I personally can, can run quickly, but what about those 300 who are continuing their prayers? So the rule is finish your prayer immediately, take it seriously, and then anything else can be uh, repeated after that. So, so, so yes. One, so, so there is no false alarm, okay? So when you are here, you hear the alarm, it is an alarm, okay? You can't differentiate whether it is false, you know, is because of a, uh, misfunctional, uh, you know, component. So you got to leave. No, I yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, alaikum. I worked previously in an airline company and I was a fire marshal over there. Um, but we used to have regular drills uh, for which, you know, vests were provided and contact numbers were provided. Um, do you plan to do uh, fire drills regularly? Okay, uh, good question. Uh, so if you're a, f a fire marshal, that means you, you had some kind of a training, you know, all that thing. So th this, is this, is, this is what I was asking. Uh, it, it is very beneficial for this community to have the trained people. But uh, we are thinking about doing an, uh, uh, you know, a uh, dry run someday you know can but we do it today like imagine there's a fire right now uh, you, you can do it right we can do it but uh, you know uh, i would like the security guy you know our chief uh Hamid Saab, and the other guys you know those who are here uh, it will be very beneficial for all of us i mean because so. fire is an inconvenience uh, oh, we, we don't have to wait for a day no for that, no, right? no 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 uh, it, it will be arranged hopefully you know before we get into ramadan so maybe during a Maghrib time after Salatul Maghrib or Salatul Isha. Okay. Am I right, Nadir sir? Yeah, we can uh, yeah. Okay. If you want to do it now, yeah. everybody is ready? Absolutely, yeah. Say again? Yeah, I'm, I'm done here. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. to her, her men, what she mentioned, we want to practice whatever we learned today. So in order to be like visualize, not just in a words, in a action. And how long it takes for us to get to the metro point and all those kind of things? Uh, it will be difficult because, uh, you know, mothers or dads, they might be carrying the young children, not one, probably a couple of, you know, in their hands, and they are going in that direction. So this, this is what we need to understand, I think. The gravity situation, uh, you know, it, gravity of that is very difficult to conceptualize, but when you get into the situations, you know, 
it is more troublesome. I tell you that where I work, you know, about 2,000 people in that building, when they do the drill, the 2,000 people come out of the building, you know. So it takes about 10, 15 minutes because everybody coming down the stairs. Yep, correct. And, and that's what you do that regularly in the school, correct? Uh, right. Okay. I will do it. I will, I'll do it a quick way and then we can look at it. Yes, sir. Brother Osmani, Jazakallah khair for the fabulous presentation. There was a couple of learnings we had with the, the marhum Dr. Bahjas event. Uh, if you remember, it happened after Isha. He went into some medical situation and there was, for lack of a better word, it was a chaos. Nobody knew what to do, how to manage that situation. You added a few points that take the person to a safe um, uh, location and first responders. I want to add a couple of more things uh, for your consideration that we need to create a safety parameter. What was happening, the brother was getting out of breath and we had 30 people overlooking, trying to help. They were no good to him, but more trouble. So we need to have the team, whoever it is, the designated folks, create a safety parameter, move everybody at least 30 feet away so the doctors can actually come and do what they need to do as such. And when that resuscitation is happening, we don't need 50 overlookers to do that. Uh, there was no communication from the member. There was no, nobody had like, this person is char discharge, in charge and listen to him or her as such. We need to have a scout out there to guide the first responders coming. It took about 13 to 17 minutes for them to come. But anything you can do is a step, inshallah, in a, po a more positive outcome. So those are some things. At that time, we tried to write some procedure, but I don't know if it ever made it to your attention or the safety team as such. But we need those simple common sense to happen in those times of stress, which unfortunately we all panic. We are all human beings. So, this so uh, th that's what the first aid procedure is there and that, that is what we were talking about, that do not crowd the person. Give him, the spa him or her the space to breathe, to have more air. If you are trained for first aid, whether it is respiratory, you know, mouth to mouth, you know, surrogation, defibrillator, you can start doing that but if you are not trained you know don't touch it now the defibrillators we have installed defibrillator here and in the gym right and i think there was i don't remember uh, right and so these are the things that anybody can use but in a panic it's very difficult to read the uh, you know instructions and do the first aid so that's why it comes from right. If it is ingrained in your brain, then you can do it. Yes, sir. Ready. So I need four volunteers, women volunteers, and I need for the men volunteers. Uh, raise your hand quickly, you know. Okay, good. All right. So what you will do is uh, you, you're going to go into the back doors and you will open the door and hold the doors open. Uh, all right. And the men volunteers, th we will go from this door and the double door right in the back. J just we are going to evacuate this place quickly as quickly as possible and then we can come back or you know